Good morning, and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yuri Polari. Um, well, let's look at the polity this morning. Um, and because of that, our guest is um, Dr. Nicholas Felix. Dr. Nicholas Felix, you might recall, is uh, he was the 2023 youngest APC presidential aspirant. Uh, he also was the Deputy National Youth Coordinator of the you know, now defunct APC Presidential Campaign Council. And um, he's joining us from New York. Uh, so we'll be looking at a focus, we'll be taking a, putting a focus on the untapped potential of Nigerian youth. First of all, uh, good morning to you, Dr. Nicholas Felix. Good morning, thank you for having me, good to be here. Always our pleasure. Um, so uh, here we are, um, talking about youth and the, the, the potential of the Nigerian youth. Now, on the one hand, in governance, in government, um, going by all the appointments that have been made, going by the cabinet of the president, uh, I guess uh, there's a sense in, in which uh, that whole concept of the untapped potential of Nigerian youth is you know, fast receding, um, arguably. Uh, but then when you look at the polity, when you look at the country, uh, and look at the potential of Nigeria. Um, would you, do you think that it is the, 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 the contribution of youth is still untapped? Yes, uh, good morning and good morning to Nigeria. Thank you one, once again for having me. Uh, first of all, we must commend Mr. President for keeping to his words and his promises as regarding having youth on board. Uh, right now, majority of the appointments coming in uh, uh, mainly youth, and we're, we're really grateful for that. And I believe uh, as soon as the administration continue, you know, in governance, we're going to be seeing the effect of having youth on board. So we must commend the, the you know, the president for that. Uh, now, when we speak of the untapped potential, you know, over 50 or even 60 percent of the population are youth. So we're talking about areas where the youth, not just in governance, everybody cannot be in government. The areas where the youth can be very effective as regarding job creation, as regarding you know, entrepreneurship and all of that. Uh, now we have youth on board who are gonna join the president in driving the economy. But we want to see youth more active in areas of unemployment. We want to see the unemployment rate among the youth really go down. I think these are the areas uh, 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 we need to focus on. Mm. Well, well, as you know, one of the hallmarks of uh, the youth is, uh, especially in a place like, like here, like Nigeria, um, they will bring on board, given half of a chance, uh, uh, a refreshingly uh, different uh, perspective, uh, perhaps, uh, on things. Yeah as long as they are given the chance. Now, one, one of the things that, and here I, 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 I agree with you, we're not just talking about governance, we're talking about the society generally. Uh, because I recall, around the world, Nigerian youths are getting kudos uh, in all yeah. sorts of fields, especially the, the, the new generation, you know, uh, new vistas, uh, technology, uh, and uh, that kind of thing, uh, area of, you know, computer science, they're getting kudos all over the world. We hear of Nigerian, uh, Nigerian youths that have joined the realms of, is it serious dollar millionaires, if not uh, billionaires, in, in that whole area of tech. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. when, you, when you look at that, the youths here are no less uh, bright. But whether Mr. President has promised that they're going to be uh, finding, they're going to be creating uh, opportunities, you know, uh, for the for, for for Nigerians to flourish, but it is mm. the youth that, that can take advantage of this. I imagine uh, providing the opportunity for Nigerians, uh, for instance, this whole matter about the ease of doing business. They're going to create all of that yeah. structure. So youths are going to really play into this. Do you think the youth in our country are, are ready to take it up? Wow, thank you so much for, for, for this question. You made my day <laughs> with, this, with this very question. You see, I wrote, uh, there, there are several ways for the youth to, to really get engaged. And within the next few minutes that we have, I'll, I'll be able to give just three. 
Sure. Number one, this is the first one I wrote down, and that's why I'm excited you asked this question. If you look at what the president has been doing, all his meetings, you'll notice the president is focused on getting investment, generating income, creating jobs. Uh, I was actually here with him in, in Hunger. You know, despite the fact the president came for the Hunger program, you see him on the sideline meeting with people. All of this is to be able to get investors back to Nigeria. In the area of tech that you mentioned, that's one area, tech and entertainment, is one area the Nigerian youth have been doing extremely very well. But I, I believe the, the administration will need to, to do more in assisting them. Let me go, let me go further. Do you know Nigeria is, uh, uh, we, Nigeria cannot monetize their content creator in Nigeria. They cannot generate income directly from Facebook. Right now, there are only three countries in Africa, among the 54 countries in Africa, three countries are only allowed to monetize uh, you know, ads on Facebook. We're talking about Egypt, we're talking about Morocco and South Africa. But the question now is, how come Nigeria, who at large is the largest population, when you put uh, Egypt, 109 population, you put uh, uh, Morocco, about 37 million, you put South Africa, about 59 million together, they are still not up to us, the giant of Africa. Nigeria is the richest uh, country in Africa by GDP, over 477 billion. So whichever angle you look at it, <laughs> we are supposed to be generating money on Facebook. But how come uh, Nigeria is not among the countries who uh, content creators? That's where a lot of Nigerians are doing very well. If you notice... Uh, by, by, the way, by, by the way, by, by, by the way, sorry to interrupt, by the way, what, what, what in your view is the reason for that seeming anomaly? I, I, I mean, I, I really cannot tell why, because we have thousands of content creators in Nigeria. You look at it, what we call Yahoo in Nigeria is actually going down because why Nigeria youth are not engaged in the tech industry. So right now, if we have thousands of youth uh, who are content creators, they make a lot of money. I know this because I have been contacted by so many content creators wanting me to help them with my account in America to be able to generate funds. One of my team said to me, I make over 30 to 37 million naira every month just from, from Facebook. But the issue right now, Facebook cannot pay Nigeria directly. So every content creator in Nigeria, a blogger, they have to go through what they call the back door. Meaning you get an agent and you get somebody who lives you know, in America, these European countries, uh, to be able to use their account and you get paid out. Now, we, here's the disadvantage also to us as Nigeria, as a nation. Facebook pay taxes to taxes to these countries. So since Nigerians are generating millions of dollars, millions of naira, and even millions of dollars, because there are content creators who make over hundred thousand dollars every month. That may sound very funny. These things we watch on, on Facebook, on social media, they create content, they tell you, share, comment. It, it looks funny, they're entertaining to us, but the youth are actually generating income. Facebook is a multi-billion uh, dollar business. So what we need to do now is get Nigeria to be among the countries that can pay out directly. That will also generate income for us as a nation because Facebook now will be paying taxes. Every money that a content creator generates, the taxes no longer go to America. Look at most of our content creators. They are making millions of dollars every single month. The taxes, they are going to this country instead of coming to us as a nation. And now, if you give the youth easy access... So people are begging, oh, can you help me open an account? I'm, I'm making money on Facebook, but I cannot cash out directly. I think the Minister of uh, uh, Communication and Digital Economy should go with a high-powered delegation. I'm not talking about meeting with a branch of Facebook. Sit with the main people on Facebook who, who are the deciding uh, uh, team and be able to discuss with them that Nigeria needs to be among the nations in Africa that can cash out directly so that it will empower our, our content creators, our you know, the YouTubers and all of that, to be able to generate income. Because this is one area the Nigeria youth are doing extremely very well. So we must focus on that, empower them. The tech is not going anywhere, any, uh, going away anytime soon. So this is an area we must participate on. Even, even in terms of YouTube, I also learned that the taxes Nigeria uh, uh, on YouTube is about 30%. Whereby mm. a place like America is about 20%. Mm. So you have a lot of uh, content creators who still have their account in a place like this because of the percentage. 
So Nigeria need to, this administration need to look into this. If need be, reduce it because we need all the taxes possible. It's another way. Imagine generating millions of dollars through this means as uh, uh, through taxes to the uh, federal uh, government. So Indeed. we must look into the tech world, anything possible to get, to get uh, our Nigeria youth engaged and easy access to be able to generate income online. Indeed. <clears throat> Thank you very much, uh, Doctor, because <clears throat> um, it, continuing in the line that you're on, uh, the Vivos of this world, the Spotify's of this world, the Apple Music of this world, the streaming, the streaming and Nigerians, as you, yes. you spoke about entertainment, um, there are some Nigerians. Some Nigerians have dual citizenship. Uh, some star Nigerians have both American and Nigerian citizenship. I imagine it might be easier for them uh, because of uh, some of the things that you've spoken about. So they could actually register yes. because they have a domiciliary uh, in, in the United States or in the UK, that kind of a thing. But it's pointing to look at this is the fast track and legitimate fast track to um, previously unimagined and unknown wealth among the youth. It's exclusive to them. In fact, the elders can't even look in. It's just by definition. It is what it is. The elders don't have what they yes. have, you know, uh, and, uh, and it's all honest, even though there have been challenges in that whole area of uh, uh, Nigerian credit cards haven't been declined uh, because of uh, trust issues. But I think it's, it's, it's getting uh, better now. But let me not dwell too much on this subject, um, uh, Dr. Felix, uh, alone, uh, because even here, there are a lot of youths that are, are looking at the reality of the times. They are professionals. They are qualified as lawyers, as a graduate in this and at that, uh, but have betide, decided to become entrepreneurs. There are people who are doing their yeah. own things, their own businesses, and are now using uh, the, the, the internet uh, as much as they can to have a much wider audience. So here you are, you're in Nigeria. It might be food that's your specialization. Um, and you, you have customers from across, you know, your region of interest, not just Nigeria. And um, so all of that's a sort of a new economy that you very well know about and the whole digital economy knows about. But I don't think Nigeria has been too friendly in the area of um, um, a cryptocurrency, fintech, generally speaking. Uh, Nigeria, I don't know, do you think we're sort of dragging our feet a bit in that regard because of um, security issues or trust issues or transparency issues? Uh, you see, every nation has issues. Wherever you go, the, the civilized nation, America, United Kingdom, name it, they all have issues. Uh, we cannot just focus on the issues and not do the right thing. Right now, I, I'm, I'm focusing this on two, two angles. Uh, number one, the, the federal government, the states, they need to generate income also through the taxes. The, the system does not even encourage that. The system does not permit that to happen. For example, some of these content creators are not even registered. So we have Nigeria U2 are making a lot of money. Taxes are not being paid. There is no track record of, of all of these. Why? Because they are not registered. I think this is where uh, uh, probably we can look into encouraging the Nigeria U2, those who are into entrepreneur, those who are in the tech world, to be able to go into registration. If need be, give it 30% off. To say all Nigeria youth who want to get into business, whether you are online, whether you're offline, to be able to register their business. Number one, that will also assist in getting loan because most Nigeria youths can't even access loan to do business because there's no track record. The business is not registered. They don't even have business accounts to show to the bank that we've been doing business, we can be able to give you loan. So banks cannot even give loan to, to Nigeria youth. So we are still doing it in the, the local way, not doing it right. And that has really uh, incapacitated the, the Nigeria youth. So I think what we need to do now as a government is to encourage Nigerian youth, the young men and women who want to go into entrepreneurship, letting them know we can give you social percent off. Come and register your business. Take the, the next step, register it. Whether you are online, register it and be able to have the means uh, uh, to generate income. Now, in terms of the, for example, the Facebook issue that I talked about, there may be reasons why Nigeria has not been among the nation. You know, the biggest, by every way around, we, we are supposed to be number one. If Morocco, who is just 37 million people, can generate art, and uh, Egypt, uh, South Africa, who is 59 million, and we are over 220 million, I think we should be able to, 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 to generate uh, income. 
But I think there are disadvantages. That's where we sit down now to look at how to cover these uh, uh, loopholes that is preventing the Nigeria youth from exploring uh, their potential. But there's so much we can be doing instead of just sitting down, waiting for palliative from the federal government, waiting to get federal government uh, uh, jobs or state jobs. The Nigerian youth need to start looking into entrepreneurship. And we need to encourage them. We need to open their eyes. And that's why conversations like this are very important. We need to let them know, go and register your business as a youth. You know, maybe from 45 down, you get to also present discount and making it easy for them to register and be able to uh, uh, explore other alternatives. Look at the president is doing very well, you know, making sure like a student loan, you know, uh, giving to students, you talk about uh, grants given to, to businessmen and women, but the average Nigerian youth cannot assess this because they are not properly documented, they are not properly registered. So we need to, you know, give a retention like this, talk to them. There are so much opportunity out there. For every problem, there's a solution. And for every solution you create, that's how you generate income. As bad as COVID-19 was, people became multi-billionaires. It was a problem. The, the company who created vaccine became billionaires. Ordinary masks, even hand sanitizers. Companies who were making hand sanitizers uh, became uh, very rich. Why? For every problem, you create a solution, you generate income. So we have so much issues right now in Nigeria, which means there are so much opportunity for the average Nigerian youth there to begin to make it. You know, Nicholas, it's so excellent. But we have to admit we're talking about one end of the scale here, talking about the issue yes. of youths. Uh, yes. uh, starting from people like your very good self, you ran in 2023, uh, you know, as, the, uh, as a presidential aspirant, uh, as a youth, you know. And only the other day, uh, this week, we were talking about the situation in one of the states, where Kano, for instance, where we have over a million youths, uh, a million kids out of school, just roaming the streets. And um, that was not just unique to Kano, uh, it, it really could be the situation in quite a number of our states. So it seems like there's, we have to prepare the youths, the, those kind of youths, to not be locked out via a lack of education, just not knowing anything at all, not even mm. being to, mm. not even being aware. They don't even have mm. rudimentary education. Mm. And as you said, it's a scary number. It's a beautiful number. It's a powerful number, over 220 million. But it also could be a scary number if you have such you know uh, uh, such a force that just doesn't know uh, what it needs to know. Talking about education now. They're not educated. You don't, if they're not educated, I wonder the extent to which they are really quality youth that have great potential. It's, it's, it's a scary number if we don't know what to do with it. The, the strength of Japan, China, and India is their numbers. You know, if nations like this with over 1 billion per people, persons can take advantage of their number, which is the human resource that God has blessed us with, it's not a curse. But if we don't know what to do with it, it becomes something, something very, very dangerous. You see, most times I notice uh, that we all, we Nigerians always focus on the president. Everything is all about the president, the president. I think it's time for us now to be holding our state governors accountable. That is very crucial because you look at some of these schools, the president is not responsible for all. That's why we have state governors. That's why we have senators. You know, that's why we have House of Rep members. These are the hands, that are part of the, uh, the uh, government that ensure that the schools in our local government, the schools, we have local government chairmen, we have the councillors, you know. So when schools are not doing well, I saw one recently, even in my own state, at those states, we had students, there was no, they were not even seats, no matter how bad it was, they were literally on the floor. Even the floor was so bad, I was saying to myself, how did a state governor or even a local government chairman sit and allow this to happen? You know, so we need to be holding them accountable so that they, they, they can get the things done. They, every state government gets allocation from the federal government. And we recently, we even heard, because of the first subsidy remover, their state allocation has gone up. So the question now is, what have the state governors done with this uh, uh, allocation that come to them monthly? So uh, it, it is scary if we don't know what to do with it. But I can tell you the human resource is something that we can tap into and generate a lot of income for the average Nigerian. I'm, I'm saying the youth, the youth, because these are the strength of every nation. And by large, we are more than, you know, our fathers, many of them which, who have retired, 
So when I use the word youth, it doesn't mean others cannot get involved, but that, you know, this has been uh, the area where I advocate, my constituents that I advocate for. So that's yeah. why I always repeat the word youth, 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 because yeah. Yeah. we have the energy, we have the strength. In place like this in America, I remember some of us do two, three jobs. We don't just rely on one job because we have the strength, we want to work. So the average Nigeria youth need to be given the opportunity and we need to start holding our senators, our state governors, our councillors, our House of Rep members, and even our local government chairman responsible, holding them accountable, calling them to order for doing the right thing. Especially, especially if all of those people you, you, you mentioned just now, uh, those are the leaders in our societies, um, if, if they were to understand that um, uh, education is in this way, we know our people have always valued education. Uh, but then again, government spending on education, it's, it's, it, it's a cost right in there. And um, oftentimes we fall down on that regard. Um, you've just spoken you know, in passing about education. As we speak, there still are you know, youths, because we're talking about youths, there still are children in this, in, in this country in certain aspects. Uh, so sometimes it's, 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 it's incongruous. At the same time, we have Nigerians, we have in the best institutions in the world, uh, yeah. be it Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, and all of those. And then we have youths who, um, it's, it's not an exaggeration, exaggeration to say, who are having to attend classes under trees, without mm. even desks, sitting down. And um, so there have always been complaints. In fact, as soon as we open the phones and, you know, some of our, our, our viewers begin to call in, a number of them are quite education inclined. They, they are like education rights, education rights activists, uh, advocates. Um, there's always been this complaint that we are not doing enough, uh, even though I fully uh, appreciate the fact that, well, you know, resources are scarce. But we have the level where there are still areas where students have to attend classes, if you want to call it that, under trees in far-flung remote areas. So that there is one heck of a big headache for all of those people that you mentioned, from the president right on down to the local government, local council chairman. And I don't know the seriousness with which we're addressing it. And as long as those who are in charge, well, they, 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 they're they good. Uh, even if it is tashere, they'll be able to have something for food. But the, the, the tomorrow, the youths of tomorrow, the difference between being, you know, an armed robber, uh, a criminal, mm. and uh, uh, being a creator, being an innovator, being an entrepreneur, yeah. it looks like it's all in the orientation that these youths have. You see, the, we, we must start creating an, an, an enabling environment for the average Nigerian to succeed. You see, God has blessed us as a nation, as individual, as a race. I'm telling you, God has really blessed us. As bad as it may be for us, you know, in Nigeria, even in the educational uh, uh, sector, we still try when we go abroad. The average Nigeria, I can tell you this, our professors in schools, as they hear you are in Nigeria, they don't play with us. We can be discriminated on the street because maybe you're black, other things can happen. But as soon as it comes to education, the average Nigeria excel, they succeed. For example, I left Federal Polytechnic. I studied electri electrical and electronics engineering with my ND, I left with a pass. I got to America, I left school with a 4-point GPA. I got data with distinction. I was an honor student. And I said to myself, the same me, but the environment was more conducive. The, you know, I got, uh, my school fees was paid. I had time to, to study. I got financial aid, uh, student loans were there, just like the president has proposed. All of these things, they make us do extremely well when we leave the shores of Nigeria. So, we are blessed as a nation. I think we need to start cultivating. We need to start creating a well-enabling environment for the average Nigeria youth to succeed. The number, the human resource, is a great blessing. It's not a curse. It becomes a curse if we cannot harness it, if we cannot take advantage of it. And that's why I'm, I'm, I'm glad the leg the, the president is taking, you know, getting investors on board, getting things that we keep the average man working. For us as a Nigerian youth, and even the women, I think this is the first time we have gotten it right. I don't believe we can complain that uh, you have not been brought on board. 
And that's why we, I will admonish every young man, every young woman out there who have had the opportunity to be given an appointment to win an election as youth. We have been shouting, clamoring for youth. Now we have it. We must do something with it. We okay. cannot go and sit down. The president has given us a, I mean, we cannot complain. We've had more than enough, uh, as like never, like we have never seen before. We must now take advantage of it, get the youth to start working. Like you said, the difference between a youth becoming an arm robber is when they have nothing to do. The other day, I was in a hotel in Benin City, and somebody was, the young man who was cleaning the room, I noticed the way he was talking. Usually, sometimes I will engage them, especially if they're young. What do you do? Did you go to school? And I noticed he studied biochemical uh, uh, chemistry, and now he's a cleaner in a hotel. I was so moved. I'm, I'm glad he got something doing, but imagine going to school, graduating, and yet nothing to do. You have to settle for less. So we must create an enabling environment. Entrepreneurship okay. is the way to go. The average youth out there, get a business register, do the right thing, and get going. All right, then. Um, okay, Nick, let, let's take a, a, I will take a break now. Please stay with us. We'll come back and we'll look at Nigerians that have become, still talking about Nigerian youth and the potential, become frustrated enough to move out, go to other places. It's not as easy as they might have thought, but it is, you know, some, it, we're, we're losing out there too in terms of uh, some of the potential that we own. Stay with us, please. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Our guest this morning is Dr. Nicholas Felix. He's reaching us from New York, where he's based. He was the um, youngest APC presidential aspirant in 2023 and deputy uh, national youth coordinator of the APC uh, presidential campaign council uh, at the time. Um, he's, clearly, he's a successful entrepreneur. And uh, so what we're doing now is that we're looking at the untapped potential of Nigerian youth. Nick, let's, this time, um, sort of cast our gaze on another aspect. Youths are moving out of the country. They got frustrated. They're looking, you know, over the fence and the grass does appear greener on the other side. And so you have most moving, moving into Canada, moving into the US, the UK, uh, even Finland, wherever we'll have them. Uh, youths are just moving out. But then we're getting reports that it's not as easy as people might have thought. You see distressing pictures of you know, immigrants who had come with the notion of, you know, greener grass, uh, sleeping rough, sleeping on the streets, mm. uh, dreams being shattered, uh, but rather than come back home. So uh, let's, let's spend a, 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 a bit on that. They, they, let, let us not sort of um, uh, give, it, uh, give this whole uh, concept a bad name. There are those who are successful in their endeavor, but give me your thoughts on the number of youths uh, that have decided that the option is to move out, go take up citizenship elsewhere. And um, I, I guess the idea is that we're going to make it here, and then when we do, we probably will go back home. Some people are so disillusioned that they're even talking about them not being Nigerians anymore. Um, such yeah. miseducation will be righted later on, but that's the way they're feeling for now. Yeah, you see, uh, of course, such statements come out of anger and frustration. No matter how much you disassociate yourself by blood and by birth, you're still in Nigeria. Uh, I won't blame any youth out there who want to, like we call it, the Japa syndrome, who want to leave the shores of the country. And I must tell you, I've also seen youth in Nigeria who would tell you they don't want to leave. And most times, such youth is because they have something going on well for them. You know, Nigerian youth are leaving because there's nothing happening for them. No job, insecurity plague the, the, the nation. At the end of the day, uh, most times Nigerians in the diaspora return back home. You see them spending money, especially Christmas is coming. You're going to see a lot of Nigerians come on board. Uh, some will come with cars. And at the end of the day, they think, oh, I have to go abroad. That's where it is. So the extent you see Nigeria go to a nation like Haiti. What, is, what are Nigerians doing there? One of the poorest nations on earth, Burundi. Nigerians are all over the place. They use the word anywhere else but Nigeria because of the frustration uh, the Nigerian youth have gone through, no job and all of that. So we must focus back on uh, creating jobs for the youth and that we enable them work and not just think of, you know, exiting the country. Other than that, no matter what you say to the average Nigerian youth out there who want to travel out, 
There are some right now, all they think about is how to get a visa and leave. That's, and that's right. why you see some go through the desert. That's why you see some go through, you know, uh, on this makeshift boat, go, traveling to Europe or all of those countries. Some deadly situation. Many, many don't even make it there. Many down the way. Many get amputated. Things happen to uh, uh, Nigeria, the youth on the way, just trying to look for greener pasture. Mm. This is very concerning. Mm. This is something that uh, we must look into. But again, okay. No matter how much you say it, no matter how much you tell them, don't leave the country. If you don't give them something to do, I think that they uh, will go. Just fall on deaf ears. Yes, <laughs> and, um, and unfortunately, this, most of them take up menial jobs. Not all of them, by any means, but most have to take up menial jobs that they would not have preferred had they remained. But uh, let me bring on um, Mazi Okora for calling in from Arochuku. Good morning to you, Mazi. Good morning, sir. Good morning, our guest. Thank God today mm. is All Saints Day, where the Catholic Church commemorates the All Saints. People like us, but they are saints. All of us are working to be saints. Now, you see, in today's life in Nigeria, some youths, not all, are hardworking. Hardworking in the sense that that is their bro with their saint, with their energy. But many of them are looking for one million naira jobs a month. That is why. Many of them are just focusing on all this uh, make quick syndrome. Many of them are in a hurry to get to work, which is not healthy. Now you ask yourself, this is a country like ours. You see many youth rushing out to Nigeria, that's going outside Nigeria. You are going there to do the guard work, you are going there to clean toilets, you are going there to do you are going there to do driving work. But here in Nigeria, what does it take you to sit down? Because of pride. You see. Now, Sayori, we research work have shown that in Nigeria, what we see today as a research researcher, that many of these students, their parents don't give them what we call orientation. Their parents build skyscraper on the sky for them. And many of these students follow it. A child will come, each one of you has a mother to tell you that, look for a job, no matter the man. If you start waiting, you don't want federal government, you don't want to stay as a state job, you are looking for oil, for oil industry, for juice industry. Yes, there's nothing wrong to have high test. But you have to start somewhere. I told myself, I said, look, that's early 70s. I worked with CMD, Center for Management Development. I think the office there, the state office there at them. That's the guy that, it's coming from the uh, uh, Badon, the Lagos. That's the guy, that's roundabout. I worked, I was in an upper office as a library assistant. How much? One hundred naira. That hundred naira, they removed the naira as tax. I can go in with ninety naira. That was that seventy. I told them this. I said yes. They say in those days. They forget about in those days. But now, as you as a child, how do you cope? That instead of the parents allowing the child to start somewhere, if he or she have learned the skill, encourage him. My friend, my lady, my girl. How much have you saved? How much do you have as your own savings? You come, yes, you start somewhere. But the situation whereby you carry your car, get your child, buy a friend, get him, every time he comes back, he's just ignoring. At the end of the day, tomorrow you start complaining. That child has not learned anything. Honestly, the mass rush of Nigerian youth rushing outside, it doesn't matter. Look at music industry. Look at every educational status. Look at what you call artificial. It's digital system of work. That's Digital work, computer work, this and that. Many of them, they are too good in terms of all these things. But for them to sit down and do it, it's their problem. You give a child a job. Maybe you mention, or maybe a, a, a big layer, this and that. You decide to go and buy some standard material to pocket half of the money inside and do some standard work. How do you expect somebody to call you back tomorrow to come and do the same and do that job or recommend you to somewhere? Okay, yeah. uh, Maz, Maz, you're Korapo. Thank you very much uh, for calling in. And um, Nicholas, Mazi was hinting there, it uh, was, was touching there at another aspect that I'm sure we'll also be talking about. And that is this whole, you, 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 we've spoken about uh, making the conditions for starting business uh, easier, you know, getting foreign direct investment and all of that. People have always spoken about our need to be productive, to have something to sell. Uh, you know, whatever it is. It might be intellectual, it might be, you know, whatever. Uh, but that's another area. Would you like to comment on that when you also relate to what uh, Mazio Korafo 
uh, calling in from Aro Chuku uh, spoke about, the actual productive capacity to do something, sell something, trade in yeah, something. Uh, yeah, yes. First of all, let me disagree a little bit with uh, Maxi as regarding the average youth out there. Uh, I don't know how many you have met, but the Nigeria youth that I talk to all the time, the Nigeria youth that I meet, they want to do something. I've seen young men, able-bodied body young men, who are doing menial job even in Nigeria. So if the opportunity is given, we are not lazy. I can tell you that. We, you see this by when we travel abroad. The Nigerian youth are not into crime in nations like America or all of this. When we get here, we walk while the job is available. So if the opportunity is given to us, we are going to walk. Yes, somebody after graduating from school, spend all these years, have a good degree, Maybe a little bit picky with we, we kind of uh, job that he's looking for. In that regard, you can blame them. So we want to work. But in terms of productivity, uh, it's only when you have the, the means to produce something that you sell. I gave a young man uh, a website to design. I noticed he was very good at it. I sent him to the, my house. He came, met me in Abuja. We sat down. I gave him my laptop. He did so much. I said, okay, I'm going to have you design this website. I was going to pay him close to a million naira for about two websites he designed. At the end of the day, he said, I don't have a laptop. Now I have to give him 270,000 naira to buy a laptop to be deducted. You know, how many, how many youth we have such opportunity? He has the, the, the brain. He has the time, the talent to get this website designed. Well, he doesn't have a laptop. The tools are not there for us to be productive. You know, so these are some of the areas... We must look into. If, if you wouldn't mind me diving into something as very, I know uh, we have those, before uh, you do that, I think you're going to yes. have to couple it with also your comments on the next caller who has been waiting for a while, George, calling in from Ikeja. Good morning, Mr. George. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Yeah, uh, Uncle Yori, I thought the president was going to bring this uh, young man to his cabinet. And uh, I, I don't know whether they approached him or, uh, and he turned it down, but I'm just thinking aloud. The issue about youth, I'm happy that the president has virtually made his government a cabinet of young people, because the majority of the ministers and his appointees are youths. So we will give them two years. By the time this administration is two years, to assess them and compare them with how it was when the elders were there as, 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 uh, as leaders. I'm happy that the president has already put in place assessment processes to assess his appointees periodically in terms of uh, performance. Okay. But if I may say this, the youth themselves, I think the, 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 the government needs to pay extra and quick attention to the power sector. If you look at it, even the youth that are not educationally uh, advantaged, they have other abilities that they can explore, provided the enabling environment is there. Many of them right. have learned certain trades that they can yeah. thrive in, but there's no light. If you check these Okada operators, the youth that are riding Okada, you will see that many of them are uh, university graduates. Many of them have learned, they moved from other trades to riding Okada because there is no light to operate. If you want to run a barbecue shop, you will first need 200 or 300,000 to buy a generating set. And you will have to buy the fuel we are buying 600, 700 naira now. To, so, how much is the person going to give you when you buy it? So, things like that discourage. People. Nigerians are very, like the speaker said, Nigerians are very hardworking people. And they are not lazy people. I can, I can say yeah. that to the high heavens. But they yeah, only they need are. an enabling environment to demonstrate their potential. I think that is where they okay. need to concentrate. Thank you for calling in, Mr. George. It goes back to the enabling environment that Nicholas has been speaking about. Uh, Nicholas, over to you. Yes, uh, first of all, uh, like I've always offered myself for service. Uh, like I always said, uh, I'm one phone call away. If I'm called upon, I will say. Now, let me join. I, I told you I have uh, about three things I think uh, as okay. a government yes. we can do very quickly. And I know we have just maybe 15 minutes left, but I wouldn't mind through <laughs> this very quickly. Okay. Like I said, to every problem, there is a solution. The reason why we have doctors is because people get sick. 
The reason why we have mechanic is because our cars get, you know, when they break down, we have people to fix them. We're talking about insecurity right now in Nigeria is very high. I'm, I'm still surprised why we have not created what we call the armed guards in Nigeria. That is going to create nothing less than two, three million jobs alone for the average Nigerian youth out there. Armed guards, there are ways this can be done. Right now, the, the, the only people who provide armed you know, security for us are the police officers. And now we're already very low with them. We don't have police officers anymore. All of them have been assigned to, to reach people who can pay for, which is nothing bad. But this is an area where uh, the, we can generate jobs, create a lot of employment. How do we do this? There's a long process. Companies, security firms, have to be licensed to provide armed guards. Now, these uh, young men and women have to get their less license to be able to carry arms. So, for example, if I need an uh, armed service, like in one of my big filling stations in, in Abuja, where maybe I need an arm, armed guard, I don't need to call the police. What do I do? Call a firm that is licensed to, to provide armed guard. The, 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 the weapon, the guns, they are licensed to this company, and they assign somebody to me. By the time you do this, millions of jobs will be created, and that will ease our police men and women uh, right. to be able to do the job in protecting the citizens. So right. I think this is an area the government needs to look into. I know that people are going to talk about the disadvantage, uh, why it should not be done. In every good thing, uh, even eating, when you eat too much, you have constipation. As Indeed. good as food is, as good as food is, uh, you don't do it too much. So you must look at this area. Creating armed guard for Nigerians, which it, is a problem, just, insecurity, so it, 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 is it, going it, to create nothing less than two, three million employment for the Nigerian youth. So it's about, as you say, one of the other things is about, you know, thinking uh, creatively. Uh, Bumi in Lokoja, good morning. Good morning, sir. Thank you for calling in. Go ahead, please. Yes, sir. So the issue of employment is a thing that we can just by ourselves create ourselves. It's not waiting for government opportunity. I'm a graduate of, of Kodi State Polytechnic since 2000 and, since 2007. I've been, I've been a creative somebody. Even despite the struggling of of the country. Um. Yes, Bumi. Uh, I, I, are you saying that yes. we can we should lean on ourselves more? Is that what you? Is that your yes, point? Yes. 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 Because we shouldn't depend on government alone. Okay. No, it's not a thing of going to school and acquiring knowledge. You acquire by yourself and build it for the country, not only depending on someone's opportunity. You depend on yourself and make ends meet. All right. And make employment through there for somebody to achieve. Thank you very much for so calling in, Bumi, thing. because it feeds back directly into what Dr. Nicholas Felix was speaking about, um, creative thinking. You know, uh, Bumi there, calling in from Lokoja, she, 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 she seems to think that, look, are we, or is wondering, are we over depending on someone else to come and do it for us? Um, is there potential within ourselves that we are not exercising, exploiting? And um, you were just speaking about, just think about it for a moment. There are a number of things. Every problem is an opportunity. Yeah. Every problem is an opportunity, no matter how bad you think it may be. Once it's a problem, you create an opportunity. And in creating that opportunity, solving that problem, that is where you get your income. And look at it. You know, uh, the taxi driver, the barber, if you can barb your hair yourself, you won't, you won't be needing a barber. If you can sew your clothes yourself, you won't be so. Every problem we found today in Nigeria is a great opportunity for us to generate income. If you wouldn't mind, I go to the last one. This may yes, be a little please. bit more controversial. This may be a little bit more controversial, but I'm thinking out of the box. I'm, I'm saying to myself, look at the leg the president has taken. The president is trying to get investment down back to Nigeria. Do you know that the diaspora remittance is what you may call the, the, the second black gold? You know, oil is our black gold, our main source of income. But in 2021, over $21 billion came to Nigeria for diaspora remittance. $21 billion, where we generated over 41 or 42 billion uh, dollars from, from our crude oil. And 
Over 50% of what we got got from diaspora remittance. And that has been one of the great source of uh, why our economy is still moving, not just for the oil. What is one thing I think the president can do? All the National Assembly. This was in my manifesto in, you know, while I was running for, for president. Oh, okay. I think there should be, I don't know if, you, if I would call it a presidential pardon, or if I would call it maybe the National Assembly would come up with a bill, maybe for one year or two years, where every Nigeria, whether you're a politician, it doesn't matter who you are, if you have money abroad, what, for whatever reason, it doesn't matter, come back to Nigeria with your resources, declare it, no questions asked, pay a 30% state to the federal government. That will bring lots and lots and lots of money back to Nigeria. Okay. President uh, Donald Trump did it in 2017. Okay. He, whereby, you know, Americans abroad who have money, and he, I think he wave or reduced the taxes. Bring it back. In 2018, over one trillion dollar came back to America. One I trillion. Think to think this way. Let, let, let me one squeeze in case and dollars came back to America. So sorry. Say again. So let me squeeze in case and as our last caller. Good morning, case and We are greet you. God bless you, sir. An happy new month. Okay, please, um, please I, go on. I'm sorry, I am interested in the issue of um, the youth as regards the issue of Nigeria, sir. Because I'm a young man. Uncle, I think, feel and strongly believe that um, the country where we belong to do not even believe in us as young people. That is the greatest challenge we have. And that is why it's as if the country is diminishing. Because a country who does not have subsection cannot strive. It is not possible. They do not even believe in our capacity as young people. They will tell us experience and experience and experience. Yes, we love mentorship. We agree to mentorship. But how many of our leaders are genuinely uh, ready to mentor us as young people? They don't want. How many of them want even us to even come to the, 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 the power and actually partake in the affairs that concerns us as we are the next generation? Uncle Yuri, it may interest you to know that I ran for the House of Representatives at the age of 30 last year, this election. Yes of my constituents, the key South federal constituents. But you know what? One of the days we had a debate, and after the performance of the debate, somebody said, this young man is good. He is sound. But you know what? He doesn't have the money to do this thing. So you know, I, I want to thank you very much, Kisandu. I want to leave a bit of, uh, just about a minute or so for Dr. Nicholas Felix to, to respond to that. Thank you very much uh, uh, for, for calling in with, with that, Kisandu. Uh, whether the, some youths might feel that Look, the system doesn't even believe in us. And the L earlier, somebody spoke about, if they can fix the power problem, a lot of solutions can be found. Yes, I, 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 I can see you feel the frustration of that young man, uh, you know, from his voice, that uh, the system, the, the, some of our leaders do not believe in us. He is very right. You can't you can argue that. But luckily, you know, I think this is a good time for us as Nigeria youth. For the first time, we have we have a president who believes in the youth. Now, I'm not saying this just because I want to support him because he's my, uh, uh, you know, he's the president and he's president of our party and all of that. No, I'm saying it because the reality has, he, he speaks for himself. You know, do you know the principal secretary to Mr. President uh, is a young man under 30, I think about 30 or 31 years old. When you look at all the SA to, to the president, they're all young men and women. So. I want to believe you know, the administration just started, I think in five months now. I want to believe in the next one or two years, this effect will get to the state, it will get to the local government, where all that political leaders will begin to see potential in our youth and begin to you know, take advantage of it. But as young men and women, uh, let me encourage each and every one of you, like that young lady said, do not just sit down and wait for the government. Do something okay. with your time, do something yeah. with your energy. That was, uh, I believe that was Bumi who called in from Lokoja. Indeed. I will thank you very much, Dr. Nicholas Felix. Um, a subject like this, uh, an hour has just flown by as if it was five minutes. Uh, we certainly need to do this again uh, to keep this whole concept up, uh, the great potential of the youth and the best use to make, uh, to, uh, how we can make the best use of it. Uh, thank you very much once more, Dr. Uh, Nicholas Felix, for coming on the program this morning. Thank you for having me. Good to be here. All right, then. Our pleasure. So that's our program today, then. Please join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. I am Yori Folare. Bye-bye for now.